Hey everybody, I am John Barker and in this episode of Here to Record Show and Tell we're going to take a look at how I use the Stream Deck and an open source piece of software called Companion to control a bunch of equipment in my live video production. So let's take a look. In a few of my recent videos I have shown the Stream Deck in action where it controls the uh, ATEM and the HyperDeck and a few other bits and pieces. So this is how it all works. And the first thing you want to do is download Companion. You'll find a link to that in the description. And this is the sort of brains behind the whole operation. It's an open source piece of software that links all these devices together and it turns out the companion can talk to loads of different pieces of gear, much more gear than I even have access to. So for the purposes of this video and to keep things simple, I'm just going to show it controlling the ATAM and maybe the HyperDeck Studio as well. And then in future videos, I'll talk about other hardware and other fun things you can do with companion. So first up, what is companion and how does it work? It can run on Mac, Windows, Linux and Raspberry Pi and when you launch the application it brings you through to an admin where you'll spend most of your time during setup. In here you have a few things. Instances, this is where you add devices and their IP addresses etc. Buttons is where you configure each button on your Stream Deck. Surfaces is where you connect your Stream Decks. And then settings allows you to make a few changes to your settings. First up we'll talk about instances. In here I'm going to add my ATEM instance and my HyperDeck instance and then I just entered the IP address of each one and give it a name. I can also see here in the instance section that the connection worked. Over to the buttons panel I'll choose a button and set its style to text and give it a name like CAM1 for example. Then I'll set a key down action for this button and I'll set it to input on my ATEM to preview and I'll choose input 1. Now I can press the same button on my Stream Deck and you can see it already works. Though if you do have an 8 input switcher like mine or beyond, this will take a while for you to set up. So let's talk about presets. Over on the right here, I'm able to see some presets. At the minute, I can see my ATEM preview row and then I can just drag and drop one of these buttons onto a Stream Deck button. The other cool thing is that it's dynamic. So whatever name I give this input on my ATEM will be brought into this button. So I can change it over my ATEM and that will be reflected within Companion and on the Stream Deck buttons. The other nice thing about this is because it's linked to the ATEM, it can pull back tally information like what's on preview and what's on program and the background of the button will update to reflect that. So if I press some buttons on the Stream Deck, you can see it work on the ATEM and if I press some buttons on the ATEM, you can see it update on the Stream Deck. So far things have been pretty simple. So let's take a look at a more complex example with stacked actions. At a recent gig, I wanted to set up a button called Play Clip and when you pressed it, it did a lot of different things. Pressing that button triggered all of the following actions. It set the ATEM preview input to HyperDeck. It pressed play on the current clip in the HyperDeck. It auto transitioned the HyperDeck to program. It then waited one second and then it put the wide shot in preview for whenever the clip ends. And that's a lot of things for one person to remember and to do in the right order at the same time. So with the stacked actions, I could just let them press one button and all of those things happened. Once you get a little more familiar with Companion, you'll start to find yourself with a few different pages. In my case, I have about five different pages of different types of buttons or groups of buttons that I might need. My first one is direct control of the ATEM, the preview and program row. The next one is aux control of the ATEM, so I can send whatever I want through the aux. The third page controls my own logging software, which means that I can press buttons in here to log edits. And then I have another page which talks to my own graphics software. And then finally I have a page that just has a few test buttons that I like to mess around with. Like I said, there's loads to talk about with Companion, so let's just fire through a few more things that I really like about it. The emulator will let you pretend that you have a Stream Deck and uh, you can test things out before you actually buy one. With web buttons, you open this page in an iPad or in another computer and you can trigger all your actions. And then you have OSC and HTTP. Every button can be triggered via OSC or HTTP, allowing you to integrate with other softwares. Now let's talk about a few of the pros when it comes to the setup. One is how inexpensive the Stream Decks are. Relatively speaking, in terms of other production gear and other types of controllers, the price is really nice. You can buy one or two of these things on Amazon for not that much money. The second pro is configuration and that's huge. Um, at a recent job I was able to just move all the buttons around really quickly to whatever way the director wanted them. So uh, it was super easy to do and um, I could just customize it exactly the way they wanted it. And the third pro is like I mentioned before, stacked actions. And especially for someone like me who does a lot of their stuff by themselves, it's just 
much more simple to press one button to play a clip and to auto transition and to do this and to do that and um, so that's a that's a huge pro in terms of the cons of the setup i can't really blame companion for much and um, it's more the stream deck side of things sometimes you press a button and it doesn't quite do what you think it's going to do um, but what can i expect from a device that's not really made for this kind of professional production environment. The other great thing about this whole infrastructure and companion is that because it's open source and because it's constantly improving, it's only getting better. So if there's a feature request you have or a bug that you find, you can flag it on the GitHub and um, they will fix it or at least uh, point you in the right direction. So thanks for watching. I do hope you find this useful and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have any problems with companion or if you have any success stories as well. Um, I'm super interested to hear what you do with it.